Welcome back to the channel. Today we are diving into a super cool touch designer tutorial. This project has been sitting on my computer for a while now. And yeah, it's been a bit since the last tutorial dropped, right? Now, looking at it, you might think, wow, he totally planned all this out, step by step. Seriously, it was anything but, like, total chaos, just messing around with operators, tons of just experimenting, you know, just seeing what would happen. Don't get me wrong, just because it was random doesn't mean it's going to be a walk in the park to follow. It's going to be a simple and straightforward journey. So, get ready to dive in. It sounds like a lot, maybe. But trust me, it's going to be fun and you'll learn a ton. So, yeah, let's jump right in and start creating some awesome visuals. Let's begin by adding a Sphere SOP to our network. In the Sphere SOP, set its rows and columns to 200 each. Next, connect a Transform SOP after the Sphere SOP. Within the Transform SOP, translate the geometry by 0.4 units in the X direction. Now, let's load in our desired geometry using a file in SOP. We'll be using a model of a spider bot, which you can download for free from a website named Sketchfab. Let's duplicate this geometry, as the spider bot model is quite large. Insert a transform SOP after the file in SOP to adjust the first spider bot model. In this transform SOP, translate the model by minus 0.2 units in the Y axis. Rotate it by 90 degrees around the y-axis, and set its uniform scale to 0.06 to match our sphere's size. To position the second SpiderBot model, add another transform SOP after the file in SOP. Apply the same transformations as before. Translate by minus 0.2 in y-axis, rotate 90 degrees in y-axis, and scale to 0.06. However, this time, also translate it by one unit in the X direction to prevent overlap with the first model. Now, we'll merge these two geometries using a Merge SOP. Oops, it seems I forgot to rotate the second model to face forward. Let's go back to the second transform SOP and ensure it's also rotated by 90 degrees in the Y axis. This will make both models face towards us. The merged geometries might appear slightly low on the y-axis. To correct this, add another transform SOP after the merge SOP. In this new transform SOP, lift the merge geometry up by 0.2 units in the y-direction. Next, let's merge these spider bot models with our sphere SOP using another merge SOP. To optimize performance and reduce cook time, you can turn off the display flag for the operators we've created so far. Before proceeding to the CHOP network, it's good practice to place a null SOP at the end of our SOP chain. This null SOP acts as a convenient output point. Now, let's transition to the CHOP network by adding a SOP to CHOP operator. In the SOP to CHOP, enable the normals parameter to import normal data along with position data. To separate position and normal channels, we'll use a select chop. In the channel names parameter of the select chop, type T asterisk to select all position channels, TX, TI, and TZ. Next, import a noise chop. In the noise chop, change the export method to dat table by name. Set the channel names parameter to TX, TIE, and TZ to match our position channels. To animate the noise, we'll use the expression abstime.seconds in the translate Z parameter. Copy and paste this expression to the translate x and translate y parameters as well.
To combine the noise and position data, add a math chop. Set the combine chops parameter in the math chop to add. Also, ensure the match by parameter is set to channel names. Place a null chop at the end of this chop network as well for organizational purposes. Now let's move to the top network by using a chop to top. Change the data format of the chop to top operator to RGB and the image layout to fit to square. We're going to build a feedback loop to create more complex visual manipulations. Start by adding a feedback top. To control the feedback reset, add a keyboard in CHOP. Reference this keyboard in CHOP to the pulse parameter of the feedback top. After the feedback top, add a level top. In the level top, Decrease the brightness to 0.86. Increase the contrast to 5. And set the opacity to 0.815. Add a displace top after the level top. Connect a blur top from the level top's output. Then, connect the blur top's output to the second input of the displace top. We will fine-tune the blur tops parameters later. For now, add a composite top after the displace top and set its operation to screen. Connect another blur top after this composite top. Set the filter size in this blur top to 27. Add another composite top after this second blur top. Take the output from the chop to top and connect it to the second input of this composite top. Finish this feedback work by adding a null top at the end. To cycle through different composite operations, we'll set up a control system. Import a constant chop and set its constant value to 1. Add a speed chop after the constant chop. Followed by a math chop after the speed to increase the rate of change. In the math chop, set the multiply parameter to 5. And the integer parameter to round. This will provide stepped integer values. To constrain these values to a looping range for the composite operations, add a limit chop. Set the limit type to loop. Set its minimum to 0 and maximum to 10. Finally, add a null chop at the end of this control chop chain. Now, reference the null chops chan 1 to the operation parameter of the second composite top. With the preparation of our instancing data complete, spanning SOPs, chops, and tops, let's move on to setting up the render network. Add a rectangle SOP. We'll use this rectangle SOP as the base geometry for our particles. Follow this with a transform SOP and set the uniform scale parameter to 0.002 to make the rectangles very small. Right-click in the output of the Transform SOP and select Geometry to add a GeoComp. Alongside the GeoComp, add a Camera Comp, a constant MAT for the material, and a Render Top. Arrange these operators for better organization. Drag and drop the constant MAT onto the Geometry Comp and select Material. In the Geometry Comp, navigate to the Instancing tab and enable Instancing. We will use this Null 4 as our Translate OP. 
From the drop-down menu, select R, G, and B, 4. Translate X, translate Y, and translate Z, respectively. As you can see, the instancing effect is applied properly. To adjust the camera's viewpoint, you can fine-tune its parameters to achieve a desired angle. Setting up the render network and configuring instancing is now complete. So let's move on to the post-render part of this video. We will add some effects to this project. Navigate to the palette and under Image Filters, drag and drop the RGB Delay Comp into your network. To subtly reduce the delay effect, set the dry mix parameter to 0.2 in the RGB delay comp. Again, from the palette, import a feedback comp. Along with that, grab the Bloom Comp. Add a level top after the Bloom Comp. Feel free to adjust the level top's parameters as shown or experiment with different values to get varied visual outcomes. To introduce a flickering effect in the level top, add an LFO chop. Set the LFO chops type to pulse and frequency to 2. Reference the LFO chops chan 1 to the invert parameter of the level top. Finally, Add a null top at the very end of your top network. Experiment with parameters to explore different visual outcomes. This concludes the walkthrough. Thank you for sticking around, and I'll catch you in the next tutorial.